folks, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to Look Back. Uh, this is a series of videos where I take a look at reviews I did a year, five years, and ten years ago. Incidentally, it's been a year since we started Look Back, so hooray. Anyhow, let's start with a year ago. So a year ago I reviewed Empire's Galactic Rebellion. This was based on Age of Empires series from Glenn Drover. This game was chock full. There's so much stuff in this box. It's the same thing like in space. So many components, huge board, really too much stuff, honestly. It covers the whole board. It's a really great you know, idea, though. The problem is it has a Galactic Rebellion in it, and the, the, that really throws off the whole game. I would probably have rated it a 7 or 8 had that part not been in the game. Then we have Stealing Mona Lisa, which sounds like a lot of fun. Stealing Mona Lisa, a little card game, but just too lucky for me. Blank White Dice, I was really excited about this one. This was a game in which uh, you're, we're going to roll dice and then change the size of the dice, but it was a little convoluted, and not only that, just the dry erase, I mean wet erase markers that they used were a real pain. The whole thing was just problematic, and unfortunately it looked like it almost arrived dead on arrival. I haven't seen anyone talk or play about it. London Markets, this is a reprint of an older game where you are moving pieces around the board, collecting cards for sets and things like that to get mo money. It's almost good, just goes a little bit too long for what it is. Haspel Collect, I think that's how you, I, I, I butchered that name, I apologize. This is the first in a coal mining trilogy, I'm sure. I'll be reviewing the other ones as time goes by. Me and Jason took a look at this one. He liked it a lot more than I did. I think it was, it's a fine little game. It's a, it's a little linear as you are, you know, mining coal, but it works. Uh, Super Vampire. This is a fun game for kids in which you are pushing with a vampire finger, uh, token around on the top of these, uh, basically in the top of a castle, and you don't want it to fall. You have to go around and collect vamp uh, garlic. Why are you collecting garlic? I'm not sure. But anyway, you're moving around. It's a fun little dexterity game for kids. The Golden Sails. This is a uh, game in which you are collecting cards uh, sets of cards. Uh, the artwork is really nice. I don't know if this, I mean, this, this game just hasn't really got any buzz at all, other than, I mean, I, I remember reviewing it, and it was a fun little card game, but I don't know. I don't think we'll, uh, we'll talk much about it in the future, honestly. Spooky Castle. This is a cooperative game for kids as they are moving ghosts around with a magnetic stick, and other kids are giving them directions. They have a mask on, and so you're all working together. It's really good. If you like a team building exercise for kids, this would be a fun game for them to play. Waterloo Stratego. This is actually closer to a war game than it is to Stratego. You have two asymmetrical sides. Um, you have lots of pieces, way more than Stratego ever has. You have a chance to bring on reinforcements and more pieces come on the board. And you are trying to accomplish a goal or take out your opponent's leader. A really different version of Stratego, much more complex and interesting. You gotta be kidding me. Melody and I took a look at this one. This is kind of like Liar's Dice with cards. Silly artwork, the whole thing looks really silly, and it's not as good as Liar's Dice, but it is different enough uh, as a card game. Jason and I took a look at Ingenious. Ingenious is a game that came out way before last year, but we just did a re-re look at it. Reiner Knizia, where you're placing double tiles, like dominoes, but they're hexagons on a board and then scoring for different groups and you need to try to score all the groups evenly. Not an amazing abstract game, but a really solid one and one I think holds up many years later. I took a look at Allegiance Realm Divided, which we'll probably have ranked much higher, but it's, it's very similar to Magic the Gathering in a lot of ways, except you have like a communal deck, but you have um, your own stuff too. A very, very specific characters, like big leaders, so there's a lot of really intriguing back and forth action in it. Although I haven't heard many people talk about it since then. Uh, Master of Orion board game. This one has dropped slightly for me. It really, I like the card play of the game. It's really good. It was reprinted by Cryptozoic. Um, although there's another Master of Orion game that just came out from uh, Catalyst Games, which uh, I think has more to do with the actual game because this game isn't really Master of Orion a board game. It just could have been like a space card game. It's actually a very nice, pleasant one, and I recommend it. Uh, Top that 
is a great kids game in which you have a bunch of objects and you'll see something and some of them have to be hidden under other objects and some have to be on top or touching the, the different things. So it's a little bit of dexterity, but at the same time logic to see which ones, but for kids with really good components and the whole idea of pulling a rabbit out of a hat. Really like that one. Five years ago, I took a look at Jump the Shark which is a storytelling game that just didn't do a very good job at all of it. Many storytelling games are honestly lazily designed, and this is one of them. Then Furt, which is from the same people who made Quelf. This is another game where you'd be silly on purpose, and I, my tolerance of those continues to drop, as you can see. Sushi Roll, this is a game where you're rolling dice really quickly, trying to get different combinations, but you can mess your opponent up so you can get do really well, and then your opponent can just meet you, that, that take that element, in this game, didn't work as well as I wanted it to, and so there's a lot of sushi games out there. This is probably one you should skip. Village. This one has dropped for me as time goes by. Village has a lot of good concepts in it. You have workers who get old and die. When they die, you even get points from them as they die because you remember them. That's a really good theory, but it's just a bunch of it almost feels like a Stefan Feld game, but you're just the, there's all these different ways to get points. None of them really co. Co you know, come together for me, to congeal into a full game. And so why I, I can see why other people like it. I don't think I want to play it again, especially when I played the Village Dice game. Uh, then we have uh, Search for Gnomes. Now, Search for Gnomes is a, uh, like a kid's activity, basically. You're just hiding a gnome outside and giving clues to kids to find it, leaving little pieces, and it's almost like an elf on the shelf type thing. Uh, but I, I, I thought the idea was cute and fun. Colorio, or Colorio, or I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it, is a game in which you are uncovering colors, but you don't want to uncover the fifth of one. A very simple, abstract, push your luck, slight memory game. I recommend it. Uh, Arc. Now, this one's weird. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving my ranking of six up here, but I literally, even after watching my review, cannot remember this game. It has, like, completely blanked on it. It looks like a typical collectible card game type thing. It can't be that great, honestly. So if I've forgotten it that badly. Then we have Pirates of the Spanish Main shuffling the deck. This one I really did enjoy as you kind of push your luck as you're going through a deck of cards and finding good and bad events. It was based on the Pirates of the Spanish Main theme from WizKids. Really wasn't anything like that. I think they made this game with some other themes or at least one other theme as well. This was a very underrated game, but it was, it was, it was fun. Star Trek Catan. I actually think I like this a little better than Catan, even if it does oddly using spaceships for ships. It's basically Catan with plastic pieces on. Now, when they added the Star Trek map, that was even better. This one was exclusive at Target, I think, for a year, but then you, now you can get it in other, other places. It had special abilities that you could use of the different Star Trek people, and I really like that part. It, the theme was a little wonky, but at the same time, the theme also helped, and I think a lot of people would like it. There just wasn't all the different expansions for it. Puzzle Strike, third edition. This one is dropping for me slightly. There's a lot of deck building games out there. This one comes with chips, which I don't like as much as cards. Um, throwing chips in a bag and pulling them out is not as good to me, at least in this case, because it essentially was cards. It's very similar to Dominion, but also has a little bit of that puzzle as you know, shapes are dropping in. It almost has a Tetris addition to it. Um, the third edition was a fixing of the second, which was a fixing of the first. I didn't know any of them had problems, um, but David Sterling's games, there's always like honing their games to make them perfectly balanced. It's a good game, it's a solid, but it's harder to get to the table and has a very high take that element to it. Um, then we have Urbania, which is a really kind of ugly game, right? It, it doesn't look that great, but it's a solid little build up your city, get these different cards to give you the right resources that I enjoyed. And Resistance. Resistance, I reviewed the second edition of Resistance. Resistance still holds its own today. There's a lot of social deduction games out there, and the Resistance is still one of the best. All right, let's take a look at 10 years ago. I took a look at the two games here. Condentier, this is a game that uh, has at least three editions. Sam Healy likes it a lot. It's like a little bit of area controls. You battle back and forth, fighting over different areas with cards and things. It's okay for me. And then Ingenious Travel, I just talked about Ingenious, me and Jace went over it. This came out shortly after Ingenious, but a smaller travel version. I prefer the bigger version to be frank, but if you have a small playing area or you want to play it on an airplane, this one would work well. 
So those are the reviews I did one, five, and ten years ago. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching Look Back on the Dice Tower. <laughs>